It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New York Jets on Monday night. Well, we have a cold night in the Northeast. A bad evening to be without a parka, but we are set for football at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Tonight, we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New York Jets. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Ready to get it started here, Riley Patterson. And off we go from MetLife Stadium. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And we get our first look at this New York Jets offense, really retooled the last couple of seasons. And at the helm under center, second overall pick from 2021 out of BYU, Zach Wilson. And what was really attractive about Zach Wilson coming out of college, coming out of BYU, his ability to create and make plays when many people thought they didn't exist. But what's been even better is watch him improve in the pocket, able to hit the back foot, make the right read, and the right throws. First play, and Wilson wants to throw it. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Wilson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. A good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, then you just keep moving from there because the confidence elevates. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson, open man here is Conklin. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. He finds his man complete. It's Wilson. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. A good pick up there, 21 yards. The partner, they're locked in man coverage out left and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field. And that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now the second-year man from Carolina, this is Michael Carter. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up. 
found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. From the 41, Wilson. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 31 yard line. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. To throw is Wilson. Over the middle complete, it's Davis. And he's going to be taken down at the 28-yard line. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Down to the 25. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. From the gun, it's Wilson. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Zerline's kick is up and through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3 nothing. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive, able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move. For the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Jacksonville's offense trots out here for the first time, and all eyes go right to number 16. Now in his second season as the team's face of the franchise, Trevor Lawrence. The word is potential, potential, potential. Think about this guy from the time he was in high school, one of the top prospects going to college, coming out of college, mentioned as a generational type quarterback. He looks the part. Tall, big arm, surveys the field, and can take off and run when under duress. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. A man coming off a washout 2021. It's Travis Etienne, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That's a play to take note of there for the defense. I think in the future, if you're going to try and block him, maybe you get a guard to help double-team him and try and steer him out of the play. They should have done it on that snap. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Now Lawrence to throw. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Well, he'll definitely say that that's one he should have held on to. But when you're playing in elements like this, sometimes those bullet passes, those ones with a little bit of pace on them, they can be difficult to hold on to.
An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. And he'll only get this to the 17, well shy of what he needed. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Fourth down on is Logan Cook to punt. The Jets have Braxton Berrios back deep. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Jets will take over first and 10. Here's Wilson. Forced out. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football. And he's taken down. Josh Allen. Give him the credit for the sack and a loss of 14 yards. Well, that's an excellent way to get the pass rush activated. The first sack of the game for them comes on the first play of the drive, and it makes it very tough for the opponent to pick up a first down now, playing behind the sticks. So after the sack, a scenario you certainly don't work on too often, second and 24. A give up the middle to Carter. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Well, we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. That pass complete to Moore. They get 12 yards back, but it still leads to a fourth and long. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. Jamal Agnew is deep to return it. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the 5. Superb. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And space opened up a bit. He's able to take this up past the 10. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Now Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. 
They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, that was a pretty favorable situation there. What would you call that? Second and manageable? Smart play, too. Didn't force it downfield when he didn't have it. Just checked it down, let him get the first down, and that's exactly what he did. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Well, it certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Lawrence to throw. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The end result, 21 yards. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 46. Here's Lawrence. And this one caught along the sideline, but they say already out of bounds. Now the throw didn't give him a chance to turn it upfield, and that brings up second down. Yeah, their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. On second down, a run with ETN. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. A much different second drive here, Charles. They go three and out the first time. This time they've been able to sustain something downfield. And that's what often happens. You get the game started. You know, you have to get your footing underneath you. You have to get used to the flow of the game, the speed of the game. And sometimes that first drive is more of a probing drive. It appears they found something here in the second one. this one inside the 15 just a yard or two shy of the 10 that good for 22 and a first down I think they like this drive a little bit better there partner running game helping out picking up some of the slack because remember the last drive they went three and out First and 10 at the 11. And now some motion before the snap. And this will be our first penalty of the night's proceedings. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. A false start backs him up five. First and 15. Lawrence will throw. Escaping the pressure right. That is caught at the 7. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. So the completion results there in 9 yards. And that will bring up 2nd down. He was out there waving his arms. And when you got a quarterback out of the pocket looking for any help, I guess waving the arms is helpful. It certainly is because you've got to get his attention because now you're in scramble drill. So everyone's adjusting their routes, finding open space, and he found the right spot. And he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown. Travis Etienne taking it in from seven yards away. And the Jaguars drive the entire length of the field, 99 yards for the score. And remember, that drive started back at the two, 98 yards into the end zone to finish with that run. And what do you think the guy who punts the ball was doing? <laughs> I mean, when that drive started, he was thinking about, okay, 
catch it, get rid of it, right? When he's warming up in the net, don't step backwards and create a safety because he was counting on worst case scenario. And there's a drive went on, he yeah. figured. He turned that net into a hammock. Exactly. <laughs> Give me a drink of water and let me just relax. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it was capped off by a Travis Etienne touchdown run. Patterson back out there to send this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And he returns this to the 22. The New York set to take the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series. But what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Wilson leading the Jets up now for a first and 10 at their own 22. Here's Wilson. He'll check this one down to Carter. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. What I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Five yards remain on second down. Carter straight ahead. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. On third down, Wilson. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Josh Allen, now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. A good scheme and an early win for this pass rush. They got back there before he could work through his entire progression and ended that play early. Now the Jets send on Braden Mann to punt. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They'll look to ETN to start things out. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. That's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. The Jags with the football to begin the second quarter as they've got it second down and 11. Now Lawrence. 
And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Had an open man that time. They end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Lawrence. And the pressure gets to Lawrence, and he'll go down. They dial up the corner blitz that time, and it delivers to the tune of a nine-yard loss. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Here's Logan Cook now to punt this one away. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Here's Barrios. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And the Jets will take over. The New York set to take the field. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Wilson leading the Jets up now for a first and 10, right at the 30. Now Wilson. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Carter. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. They go play action now. Wilson. And this is incomplete. Oh, he looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop could really hurt their momentum. The Jets on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and six. Now it's Wilson. Over the middle, complete. It's Carter. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. It looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? the play fake. Here's Wilson. Got an open man. That's C.J. Uzama. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch. But still an effective gain nonetheless. To throw again is Wilson. And that is incomplete, nearly intercepted. The free safety couldn't quite get his hands around it, and it brings up third down. Well, their first two drives only yielded three points. They might be thinking it's time to make something happen, push the ball downfield, and try and gain some points that way. Unfortunately, incomplete. Wilson. He finds his man complete. It's Knight. And he's going to be taken down right at the field. Well, they certainly done a nice job. He's pretty well on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back. That's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting.
instead of being aggressive and making plays. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. On first and ten, it's Carter. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Looking to throw on second down. Wilson, open man is Uzama. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. It's not cool about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. They'll run with Carter. And now Carter going to be stopped up short. He did not get there. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the beef eaters on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Well, we got beef eaters licking their chops and tasty dish in one fell swoop. I did apologize in advance, didn't I? Yeah, you did. That line's not eating tofu, I'll tell you that much for free. So Wilson runs off, and now they will go to the man they call Greg the Leg, Greg Zerline. He was true on his first. This a tough one from 49 yards away. Zerline's kick is up and through. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So the margin shrinks there as they get the field goal to draw them a bit closer here in this second quarter. Yeah, nice snap, nice hole. They just want to keep this game close, so give them credit for finishing that one off with three. For the main field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Taken at the goal line. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. On second and nine, Lawrence. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. That was well defended. They clamped down on every available receiver. Just got to give the win to the defense on that snap. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Looking to throw, Lawrence. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big one there on third down. They hit for 30 yards. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, 
Let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that one? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. On play action, Lawrence. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And they'll work this down inside the 30. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. Play action. It's Lawrence. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Back to throw again. And Jones has it over the middle. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. That's Juwan Taylor, the right tackle. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. Now Lawrence to throw. They'll try and set up the screen to ETM. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. The key to any screen play is all in the deception. That means everyone on the offensive side of the ball. But someone gave it up because that one wasn't very well concealed. And the defense able to rally to him and hold him for just a short game. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be a tough third and 18. Buying time to his left. The scramble good for a nice gain of 10 yards, but still fourth down. Like any team playing, they're looking for touchdowns to try and help their cause. But in this case, he does get them a little closer at least if they think a field goal turns out to be the better call here. Riley Patterson now on for the field goal. This from 44 yards out, left hash. Patterson's kick is good, but now there is a penalty marker on the field, so let's see what this is about. And that flag accepted. So a special team's mistake on the field goal try leads to a new set of downs inside the red zone. Looking to throw, Lawrence. Touchdown, Jaguars! Trevor Lawrence with a hook up to Marvin Jones. And they are able to add on to their advantage. And on this play, he just made a great route. The quarterback had to deliver it, sure, but a great route run there. And, Brandon, this is what the best receivers do. They work on their route running because it's one thing to have athletic ability, but to really get open, you have to set up defensive backs with different routes and be precise in your cuts. Extra point try now for Patterson. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14-6. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it culminates in a Jags touchdown.
And Patterson back out there to send this one away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. But now this offense comes back out onto the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. To throw again on second down, Wilson. Open man here is Conklin. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. It'll go as a gain of 11 and a Jets first down. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A handoff for Carter. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Now whistles come in before the snap. Looked like one of the Jets may have moved. That's on the guard, Lakin Tomlinson. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Throwing is Wilson. And Davis has it over the middle. And the Jags with five in the secondary now on third down. Now it's Wilson. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Moore. And all the way in. Touchdown, New York. I don't think there's anyone who could possibly doubt how fast he could run on the open field. But if there were, he silenced those thoughts there. And that's the kind of play where you have to kind of catch your breath afterwards and just give me a second here because when he shifted into high gear, he was an absolute blur out there. No substitute for speed. We talk about that all the time. The evidence was right there. And according to Next Gen Stats, his top speed on that one, better than 20 miles an hour. A little surprising they wouldn't go for two, but this is up and good. And the lead is cut to one at Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. 
And thus far, the weather has not slowed this offense down one bit. They've looked good so far in the first half. They certainly have. And think back to our meeting with the head coach. And we asked him because we saw the forecast for this game, didn't we? We said, hey, have you prepared for this? And he talked about the different drills that they've done in adverse conditions, the wet ball drills, things of that nature. He said, I don't think it's going to slow us down much. We tend to handle it pretty well. And he's been right. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw into the hands of Kirk. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Now, they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Straight ahead, ETN. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. Just a yard up to the 39. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Second and nine, Lawrence. Screenplay, here's ETN. And he is going to lose yardage here. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. And they'll be facing a third and 12. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Here's Lawrence to throw. He'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And he will have a Jaguars first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Now Lawrence on first down. Looking in zone for Jones. And that is incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. To throw again is Lawrence. Caught on the right side by Jones. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. So first and 10 now from the 30. Now Lawrence. Caught by Jones. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit. We decided not to throw it on first down. But give them credit, they recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. 
but it's only second and short. So that run is still likely to lead to a new set of downs. Lawrence. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Lawrence. And Ingram holds it in. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. It's a gain of six as they're able to convert, and now it's first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. will throw feeling the pressure here and taken down a sack back at the seven now a timeout signaled for and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Here's Lawrence. And he'll just get rid of it. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Patterson's kick is good, and that'll move their lead up to four now. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take punts you really don't want to do that in this case they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game so with three seconds remaining in the half they will line up to kick this one away this take it in at the goal line So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, a look at the next-gen stats for Jacksonville in that first half. And they've had all sorts of success thus far tonight throwing the football as they're on pace to throw for 300-plus yards if things continue the way they've been going. Meanwhile, for the Jets, they too were able to take advantage of a soft secondary, as both of these two teams really threw the ball at will in that first half. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. The Jaguars ready to get going to start quarter number three. And they got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? 
I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. And I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. Throwing now, Lawrence on first down. Complete to Jones. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Lawrence, now this is ETN on the draw. A little juke. And some room to roam now. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. 54 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it. But a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. They go play action with Lawrence. Sliding out of the pocket. And incomplete on the deep ball. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. Second and 10 now, it's Lawrence. He'll get this out to the flat for ETM. And he'll be hauled down at about the 30-yard line. Well, he's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. They'll run with ETN. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave him seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Riley Patterson now on for the field goal. He was true on his first. This a tough one from 49 yards away. And this is going to miss left. I don't think it even got there either. It's no good either way. And this will stay a four-point game. Now, if this was a clear day in September, I'd say this is well within his range. I'd feel very confident about this kick. But let's be honest about it. In these elements, the difficulty level gets ratcheted up by at least a factor of five. Here's the Jets offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. After the missed kick, they're in really good position. They'll begin this drive at the 39 now. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. On second down, a run with Carter. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. It's one play at a time, baby. 
Let's go, baby. Turn this ride, dog. And the Jags have five in the secondary here on third down. Wilson. Looking left side. And now the ball's out. Fumble near midfield. And the Jags grab it. And they take over. They'll set up shot at the 46-yard line. And maybe that one caused by the weather. Of course, the rain coming down. Charles, can you maybe, when you're carrying that football, grip it too tight in the rain? I think that you can, and it's such a delicate balance, too, because when you grip it so tight, sometimes it'll slip out from your body. You squeeze it too hard, and it'll pop out on its own. I've actually had running backs talk to me about that, that when they've tried too hard, even in perfect conditions, the ball gets away from them. They've got to find that good balance, carrying it firmly, yet at the same time under control. Following the fumble recovery, Lawrence out route. He finds his man. It's Jones. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now Lawrence to throw. He'll find ETN out of the backfield. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Second and nine. Looking to throw Lawrence. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Tremendous field position there and a perfect time to do exactly what they did. Take a shot at the end zone. And they went for the big play, just unable to complete it. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Lawrence going to throw again. And Jones has it over the middle. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets, 23. 11 yards for number 11. But what are we talking about here when the sticks are controlling the football? There's a great example right there. This is the third down you need to convert to win football games. We're in the third quarter of this one, and this is a tight one. In order to maintain pace, keep the ball away from the other team, and put points on the board, those are the plays they need to continue to convert. On first and ten, it's ETN. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. The tackle by Quincy Williams. This defense, tough to run against. And those linebackers, they'll go side to side up the field, and there they get them for no gain. If you can't get linemen upfield to the second level to occupy them, they have a field day just running to the football and putting ball carriers on the ground. Not many yards after contact when they wrap up like that. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered. Just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Here comes the seventh play now of this drive, as this is third and ten. From the gun, it's Lawrence. And this is going to be incomplete going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Riley Patterson now on for the field goal. This is a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. Patterson's kick is good, and that'll make this a seven-point game. 
So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. Patterson back out there to send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. Now the Jet offense about to take over as they head out onto the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? when they only gave up the field goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown but they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession the coach will just be relieved though if they recoup with a score here right i think coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield punching the end zone without turning it over and now a throw on first down there but it's incomplete Corey davis the intended receiver and now it's second down Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. To throw once more on second and ten. Wilson. He finds his man complete. It's Knight. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 14 yards is the pickup there at a jet first down. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Wilson. Open man here is Coughlin. And they're going to get this up to midfield. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. From midfield now, here's Wilson. He's got the connection to Moore. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Wilson will throw again. Out right, he's got Rucker. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. He's certainly done a nice job spreading the field on this drive. And here he finds his big tight end for good yardage. And that's what you have to do. Keep defenses guessing about where you're going to go with the football. A give Carter running right and not much running room down to the 32. He was brought down by Foya Sade Aluakin. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. 
Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 13-yard line. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. That's a pretty play there coming out of the backfield. But as that back, you've got to be conscious of making sure you're securing the football. When you get out in open field, sometimes you get a little loose with it as you're trying to get up ahead of steam. Make sure you keep it close to your body because those defenders are trying to punch it free. He does a nice job there protecting the ball and picking up a first down. From the red zone now, here's Wilson on first down. And Davis has it over the middle. From the four, this is second down and one. Now Wilson. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Brought to the ground by the linebacker, Foye Aluakon. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. On third down, Wilson. Steps away to... And he's going to go down again. Josh Allen bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. Well, this has to count as a great team effort today, but this man, he's been at the center of all of it. Really special day for any defense to have this many sacks in a game, even more so for this player. One of the best individual efforts of the season. So Wilson runs off, and now they will go to the man they call Greg the Leg, Greg Zerline. Zerline's kick is up and through, and that'll bring him back within four. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question they need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. the made field goal Zerline back out there now to send this one away and they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here and they're not going to play this conservative I don't think they had the field goal last time and they're up but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone oh I agree with you totally no one is goes out on the field and says all right let's just settle for three except in certain situations trying to ice a game that sort of deal most of the time it's end zone and that's what you're thinking and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one yeah no quarterback ever goes out there saying hey, let's get three right <laughs> <laughs> not one that I've ever met now Lawrence toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground, incomplete. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. Caught on the right side by Jones. He'll be dropped after a gain of about 
26 across the 30 to the 31. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. And here comes Berrios. Call out a 44-yard punt, five on the return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. The New York set to take the field. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, Yeah, right? a little tired, and if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. Well, they certainly did a nice job there picking him up out of the backfield and then running stride for stride with him. That's good coverage, and it led to an incompletion. Third quarter on a Monday night with a second and ten coming up. Wilson. Targeting more, and he's got him on the crossing pattern. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. To throw is Wilson. And that almost intercepted. Oh, they would have loved to have their first pick of the game right there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. Here's the Jets punter now as he's on to kick it away. Six yards on the boot. The coverage holds him to just three on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. After the incompletion, here's second and ten from the 20. Lawrence will throw. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. Nothing flashy there, the slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys, because it's a quick play, and you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch, and then he's able to absorb the contact and complete it. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. 
So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. It's Jaguar football here, and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. I'm sure that that's going to be the formula. Just keep the ball on the ground. Keep that clock moving. And when you have the lead this late in the game, above all, stay in bounds. Yes, take care of the football. Yes, gain yardage, but stay in bounds and let that clock tick. On right, second down, ETN once more. And a strong run that time as he's across midfield and down to the 43. 69 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower. That front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing, slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Lawrence. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now for getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Here's Lawrence to throw. Throw left side, complete to Ingram. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets, 26. 17 yards is the pickup there for number 17. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and indeed, he gets enough for the first down. They'll throw on first down with Lawrence. Looking for the out route here, and it's completed to Kirk. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. ETN up the middle. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. Well, he's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. This defense not budging. Back-to-back -back carries of just two yards. Just a simple run play there on third and one. But this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing it up fourth down. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This will get the lead up to seven. Patterson's kick is good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. So that gets him a little bit of breathing room, but not much. And you have to think back to the field goal that he missed earlier. This would be a two-score game right now if he had converted then. And if you and I are thinking about it, you know he is as well. Because in the back of his mind, he's thinking... I hope I get one more shot in an important spot. He just made that one. He wants one more later to truly make up for the earlier miss. And Patterson back out there to send this one away. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. And New York set to take the field. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. The 
Wilson leading the Jets up now for a first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Now it's Wilson. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The offense on third down tonight, they're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. They're up against a third and one situation. He has a man, it's complete to Wilson. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I like the design that we're seeing right there. This is what they need. Down by a touchdown here in the fourth. They just need to keep working their way downfield. And when they see openings, take their shots. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Throwing is Wilson. That's brought in by Davis over the middle. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. To throw again is Wilson. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. Used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. They go play action with Wilson. Flush to his right. And he wisely will throw that one away. Oh, I saw this one with defensive eyes because even as he escaped the pocket and bought time, the coverage stayed tight. Nothing broke down. Throwing it away, that was his only option. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Here's Wilson. Flushed out right. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Josh Allen, make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Here's the Jets punter now. 
He's been terrific so far. Averaging over 50 yards of punt so far as this one's away. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. The Jaguars getting set to go. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is... Do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. Now ETN to start the drive. Pass the 20 for a short gain. Second down. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense, but yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. Lawrence's Jones hit, and the ball's held, and it's scooped up by the Jets. And some room to work inside the 20. And he is not quite going to make it all the way in. They'll mark him down right about the one-yard line. Well, that takeaway, partner, right there, that's a combination of coaching, execution, and absolute belief. Because a lot of guys will look at the scoreboard and go, ah, this thing's pretty well done. But they still thought to themselves, if we could make a play, we give our team, we give our teammates a chance to win it. And that's exactly what they did. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me an option of running play action, maybe throwing it. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? Carter is in. Touchdown, Jets. Well, we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth-quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. They had the short field and they made quick work of it. Just two plays to get into the end zone. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Taken in at the three. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20. Call it the 21. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. They no longer have the lead after that last touchdown. All tied up in the fourth quarter. And a chance for this offense to mount a potential game-winning drive right here. I'll tell you, far from ideal conditions to play in, but neither offense has had much trouble. Plenty of points to go around. First and 10. A 
they're throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. On second and ten. Lawrence, you know, get this out to the flat for ETN. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Lawrence on third down. And able to find Kirk complete. And he is going to have a Jags first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with a bigger guy to try and use size? Can't go with a, try and go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Lawrence going to throw again. And one more time, here's Kirk. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. A snap to Lawrence as he taps this forward. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. And to throw again is Lawrence. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. And everybody thinking about the possible field goal on fourth. It would be 58 yards from here. On third down, Lawrence. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Rookie Jermaine Johnson going all the way from last chance you to now dropping NFL quarterbacks. Well, obviously the pass rush gets the glory and the statistics on this play, but the coverage, they deserve a ton of credit too. Denied open windows, erasing quarterbacks' targets one by one. Everywhere he looked, someone was covered. Only a matter of time before someone got there to bring him down. Here's Logan Cook now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. New York's offense back out there and set to go. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity, all tied in the fourth quarter. leading the Jets up now for a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Now Wilson. He's got the connection to Moore. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Let's get 
Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. Now second and seven from the 23. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 25 yards there on the catch and run. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Now Wilson. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. And it's a rush to the line right now for the Jets. Wilson to throw. This one caught by Davis. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. And they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. A give up the middle to Carter. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 41. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They're making steady progress, but I see your face. You're worried about that clock. I'm worried about the clock, and at some point, you have to have a splash play in there as well. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Here's Wilson. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. Everybody thinking about the possible field goal on fourth. It would be 58 yards from here. Throwing now is Wilson. He finds his man complete. That's Knight. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So it'll all come down to the booming right leg of Greg Zerline. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. And now this game's going to come down to the right leg of their kicker. This will be from 53 for the win. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this game will remain tied. And we've got free football. Four quarters done. And we're dead even. We'll have overtime after this timeout. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay. So in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins. But no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game.
So the Jaguars going to get possession of the football first here in this overtime session as the kick is away. Taken in at the three. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And everyone knows the OT rules, Charles, but pretty simple formula. They go down and get a field goal. We continue play, but if they can find the end zone on this possession, ball game over. And as meticulously as all teams plan for a game, I don't doubt for a second on that offense coordinator's play sheet, he's got some overtime plays that he wants to run. I know it sounds crazy, but they plan for everything. First and 10 all the way throughout the game, second and seven, whatever. Right now, he's looking at that play sheet saying, if we get to overtime, what can we break out that they haven't seen? The catch and run going to wind up netting him 33 yards. That is the exact right play call against that defense. So a hat tip to the offensive play caller because he won that part of the chess match. But give credit to his players as well. They won the execution part of it. The big play has him all the way out near midfield for a first and ten. A give running right, ETN. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy is nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now here's a handoff out of the gun. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. Lawrence. Now he's flushed out right. And Ingram hauls it in. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. Excellent play there on third down. Give him 25 yards. Brandon, that's a huge completion there. That puts him in field goal range, but let's face it. They don't want three here. They want six. With these overtime rules, a touchdown finishes it off. Yeah, look, looking to win it right away. Good to know, though, that they have three in their back pocket if they need it. handoff for ETN and he'll be taken down at the 20 after a gain of just one and I know you with every carry especially in overtime you're just saying if you're that ball carrier hold on to the football hold on to it protect it but not necessarily settling because you're trying to get to the end zone you're trying to end the game right here and I know the defensive guys poking clawing raking trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone yeah like you alluded to especially this part of the field it's a four-yard pickup there, and it leaves him with third and five. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Lawrence. And that is incomplete. Everything looked right on that play except the conclusion. He dropped it. An in route going into a little bit of traffic. Maybe in the back of his mind he was wondering where the hit was going to come from. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to at least get him a lead here in overtime. Patterson's kick is good, and they have regained the lead. 
So they do get the short field goal here to get them the all-important overtime lead. But, Charles, you wonder if they'll wind up ruining the fact that they were able to get down into the red zone, yet not able to find the touchdown that would have won them the game. Brandon, you're absolutely right. In overtime, when you get the ball first, the hope is your opponents never see the football. But now they're going to get a drive to try and win it, or at least keep the game alive with a field goal. And I'm getting a dictionary out to look up ruin. <laughs> And Patterson back out there to send this one away. The New York set to take the field. Well, it's pretty simple now. They need a field goal out of this drive to extend overtime or obviously, Charles, a touchdown to win it. Yeah, and I'm taking the defense's perspective on this one, partner, because now they know with a three-point lead, they can afford to give that up because you just keep playing, right? Overtime gets extended. But if you give up the touchdown, it's game over. So on offense, every play you make, you've got to try and get just a little bit more out of each one in order to try and get to the end zone because they're going to play everyone back, keep everything in front. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Devin Lloyd, the one to get home and earn that sack. But collectively as a defense, Charles, I think if you get four sacks a game, you're feeling really good. Now they have six as a unit. And that type of a number... It's just staggering because there's so many ways to try and counteract it. But in this case, they've got no answers for this unrelenting pressure coming at their quarterback. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. Now what can Wilson do here in the OT? Open man here is Conklin. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off, okay? So they gave up the completion, but I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication, and as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. After what they faced during this game, where they've given up a ton of yards downfield, that has to be a measure of revenge right there for the secondary. They've been shredded throughout the game and finally forced an incompletion. They'll try and throw for it with Wilson. He'll air this one out deep for Davis. That is knocked away and incomplete, but a penalty flag. In the backfield, this might be a roughing call. That's not good enough, man. In overtime, you have to be smarter than that. A personal foul just can't happen. Have to have poise. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Open man is Uzama. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second and two. Wilson will throw again. He finds his man complete. It's Knight. And he's got room. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. The Jet passing game in rhythm. They've got another first. He's padding his already great numbers here in overtime. More importantly, though, moving his guys downfield. And I think that's exactly what's going through his head right now. Moving them downfield, putting them in a position to win the game. The stats, that's for the fantasy guys. I know they're enjoying that show. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Throwing is Wilson. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he gets it down a yard or two shy of the 30 before he's out of bounds. It'll go as a gain of four, and it'll be second down. So a little chunk there on first as they try to chip away down three in overtime. I like your description. Chip away, down three, 
You don't have to get it all in one big play, although obviously that would be nice, but there's no need to have that type of risk associated with it. Run your offense, get first downs, get yourself in a position where you know you're going to at least get three and keep this game going. If you get six, so much the better. To throw again is Wilson. On the slant, he's got Davis. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game. And it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Working with a second and three. Carter straight ahead. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Now Wilson. And he's got a man, Corey Davis. And the Jets are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. They wanted to avoid the dreaded fourth down and having to get a conversion or it being the final play. They picked it up, though, on third. I love how you described that because we've been in those situations and seen it. If you get the fourth down, especially in overtime, things get a little shakier, don't they? The hands get shaky, right? The throw, if you're going to throw the ball, being able to run it, all of that coming down to one big play. Very nice of them, and nice for them to pick it up on third. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. And this will be caught. Touchdown! They needed overtime to get it done, but put this one in the win column. A great game, partner. A spectacular finish. They needed at least a field goal to keep the game alive. They do one better. They get it in the end zone and end it. And I don't know about you, but I'm worn out. That type of a game takes it all out of us as well. Not just the guys on the field. A tremendous finish. And as you noted, where they're going to go and try and get three and keep the game going. And that wasn't good enough for them. They got the touchdown. And that's why we're able to say goodbye. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys who's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's try it. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years.